So my name is Sid, Sid Dutta. I'm the Vice President at Omni Design Technologies. And today I'm going to talk about our offerings for ultra low power analog IP for IoT. Before I get into the technical details, I would like to give you a brief overview of our company. So Omni Design is a IP provider and we develop disruptive semiconductor IP that our customers can use to make the most advanced SOCs. At Omni, we have developed and invented actually the world's lowest power switched capacitor analog processing technology that we call SWIFT. Using SWIFT and other techniques, we provide innovative solutions for very low current analog and mixed signal IP blocks, ranging all the way from very high speed, high resolution ADCs, all the way down to ultra low power IoT subsystems. Our company is staffed with industry veterans, as well as entrepreneurs and people from academia, leading institutions like MIT. We are headquartered in Milpitas in California, and we also have a R&D center in Boston, Massachusetts. This is our leadership team. On the left, uh, you can see Dr. Kush Gulati, who's sitting right there. And he is our founder and CEO. He is a serial entrepreneur, has been, he did his PhD uh, many, many years back on pioneering work on uh, uh, reconfigurable analog to digital converters in MIT. Since then, he has gone on to found IP companies and led a series of uh, very high performance analog designs. Uh, next to him is Professor He Sung Lee, who goes by Harry. He is our chief technologist. He is a sitting professor at MIT, IEEE fellow. He is one of the foremost authorities in data converters in the world. In fact, since his PhD in 1984 with Paul Gray, he has been instrumental in leading forward the state of the art in analog to digital converters. Uh, I myself have been designing high performance analog circuits and leading teams for more than 24 years now at multiple tier one uh, semiconductor companies like ST Microelectronics, NXP, Maxim Integrated Products, uh, Silicon Labs. Uh, over the years, I have accumulated, I've introduced more than 28 parts uh, to production, uh, either directly or through teams that I led. Uh, spanning all the way from uh, 10 gigabit plus telecom and datacom products down to sub micro ampere signal processing for IoT. Uh, Dr. Dennis Daly is our vice president in Boston. He also did his PhD from MIT in very low power uh, systems. And since then he has gone on to lead some of the uh, highest performance, highest speed, multi gigahertz analog to digital converter developments in his career. Professor Pavan Hanamulu is a sitting professor at University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. He is our principal technologist, and along with Professor Lee, they are involved in constantly thinking of new ways to push the state of the art. Uh, Dr. Hyun Bu, who is also present here, is our engineering director. In fact, it was his PhD work with uh, Harry Lee, H.S. Lee, that led to the SWIFT technology that I mentioned earlier. Now, what is the Internet of Things? Now, we hear this word, this phrase, a lot these days, but it's not clear what exactly it is. That's because Internet of Things is not one thing. It's many different things. There are certain things which are common there, number one being a physical object, therefore the thing, with embedded with electronics, software, some network connectivity, sensors on the one hand to interface to the real world, actuators to take action, some security components and energy management. Now, if you look at the application areas, this Internet of Things, again, they are diverse applications from smart vehicles where you need communication, very high speed communication between cars and inside the car and to the cloud. At the same time, you have to have radars and lidars for collision avoidance. Then your smart homes where all these little gadgets are keeping you nice and cool in a, when, when it is warm and hot outside. Smart factories where all these industrial processes are running around the clock 
by, by using these smart sensors and telemetry, advanced telemetry. And lastly, variable electronics and implantables, which are becoming more and more mainstream now. And these things, they have to work in an extremely energy efficient manner. And most of the times, they have to be on all the time. They have to re react to real world events asynchronously. Now, again, like I said, these variables and implantables, they are becoming more and more a part of our lives. And pretty soon, especially with augmented reality, etc., you will find them everywhere. Now, one of the key things in these Internet of Things components is energy efficiency. When we work with our cell phones, it's okay to charge your cell phone when you go to sleep. But now if you have a heart rate monitor working round the clock, you don't have the luxury to put it to sleep. It has to work, right? So energy becomes very important. Now when, as a IP company, especially analog IP company, we look at this ecosystem and we think, how can we contribute to this? How can we make a difference? One thing becomes very clear that if you dig down to all these systems, you know, there's the software, there's this uh, architecture level, there's systems. At the bottom, there's a SOC, which looks very similar to what you see here. If you look at the block diagram, at the heart, what you see in pink is a microcontroller with some communication network, most likely BTLE or Wi-Fi, retention RAM. But all around it, the stuff that you see in blue is a bunch of analog circuits which interface to the real world. So the key thing in IoT is you are interfacing to the real world. There has to be something which translates the real world signals. For example, the power from your battery converts it to power, uh, manages that power. Then you have your accelerometer, pressure sensor. All those signals have to be converted to digital signals through ADCs, which can now be processed. On the other side, you have buzzers, speakers, DC motors, which have to be actuated again by analog circuits. So there's a bunch of analog circuits there which have to be on. Now, how do we reduce the power of such a thing? Most of these uh, IoT devices, especially in the variable space, uh, need a very long uh, battery life. And the digital guys, they have a nice technique to save battery life. What they do is they put things in sleep. So you go to sleep, you don't do anything, then you wake up for a very short period of time, do your thing, go back to sleep again. However, that only works if you have certain analog circuits which are on all the time. Things like the band gap reference, things like the LDO, your power management, your RTC, because these guys have to be there so that they can detect the events that are happening in real world and wake up your digital portion. Without them, it's nothing, right? Now, most of these applications, they are very heavily duty cycles. So for example, your digital microcontroller is probably working in a duty cycle of 0.1%. In that case, all these analog blocks, which are on most of the time, they are now consuming the bulk of the current. Those little red lights that you see in your receptacle late at night, those guys are actually sucking away all of your power. So at Omni, we thought the way we can make a difference is make these ultra low power IP uh, an order of magnitude lower in power. Most of this IP uh, that is available now was developed for cell phones where tens of microamperes was okay. But now we have to design these analog IP blocks so that they consume only hundreds of nanoamperes of current, one-tenth of a microampere. The goal being that all of these together, they consume power that is less than the self-discharge of a battery. If you take a coin cell, uh, its self-discharge is in microamperes. So if all of these cells, their standby current is less than that, it's almost there free. You're not doing anything with that power. So that's why we set around developing this uh, platform where people can get the micro, the Bluetooth, the standards based stuff from other people, and we add the components which add differentiation to your system. Now I'm going to go into some uh, description of our IoT IP. One of the key features when we thought about this IoT offering, uh, there are certain things which you have to keep in mind. First, it has to be available in various process nodes, not just one process node and it should be easily translatable. The reason is, if you saw the previous slides, there are like diverse applications. You don't know in advance what it's gonna be. It's not like a processor where you're always going to the next lowest node, you know? So you have to have IP which is easily scalable, easily transferable, portable from process flavor to process flavor. Ultra low current, power consumption, compact area goes without saying. Operation down to very low supply voltages. Why is that important? Because most of the advanced processes, as they scale, they are geared towards digital. Now, if you have the digital, if this is 
a system which has a digital at its core, the analog has to work with that. So if your supply voltage for the digital is going down below one volt, your analog better work with that. Uh, no compromise on performance. So just because you're saving power doesn't mean you have to give up anything on performance. I mean, if you have a circuit which is not doing anything, you can turn it off, you'll save a lot of power, it's not gonna do shit, right? So anyway, and uh, then our uh, IP licensing and integration uh, path is very straightforward and simple to make it easy for people. Here's an example of one of these family of products, the band gap reference family. Now, every chip needs a band gap reference because ultimately your accuracy of all your ADCs, all your signal processing is determined by that voltage reference. And this is one of those things which has to be on all the time, even when everything else is sleeping in your chip. Now, our band gap reference family, we are targeting 100 nanoampere supply current Excellent PS, PS, uh, PSRR, both AC and DC. Now, why is that important? Because, okay, this has to stay on when things are sleeping, but this is also there when the digital circuit is working and there's a lot of noise on your supply. So our goal is to design circuits which work, which have PSRR greater than 60 dB at megahertz of frequencies. Uh, again, like I said, no compromise on performance, so you get a core temperature coefficient of 25 ppm per C, which is excellent. Minus 40 to 125C operation, and the ability to go down to below one volt. So at one volt, at 0.7 volt, you can actually get a reference voltage, which is 0.4 volts, and then all the way up to the standard band gap, which is 1.2 volts. This is an example of a real design, which we did for one of our customers. 100 nanoampere supply current, 70 dB AC and DC PSRR, 50 ppm temperature coefficient across corners, across uh, with mismatch, etc. Wide supply voltage, this is a little bit higher supply range because that's what was required. Again, it's about two, two X, the supply range is two X. 0.6 volt output voltage. It's available in uh, 28 nanometer to 40 nanometer and other processes. Another key component, especially in advanced processes is a temperature and voltage monitor. To get the maximum juice and the most efficient utilization of your digital resources, you have to be able to monitor temperature all over your chip in a distributed manner. So it becomes very important to have an accurate temperature sensor, which is also small in footprint. So at Omni, we designed a temperature sensor and a voltage monitor combined with a very tiny footprint, which gives you an accuracy of best in class, plus minus one degree C after a single trim. And without trim, you get between three and four degree C temperature accuracy, 0.04 C resolution with a fully digital output. At the same time, we embed a uh, voltage monitor inside. So you can, typically when you're trying to monitor temperature, you also want to see what your supply voltages are or other critical voltages are. So it's embedded into it. You pull it so you can use a single piece of IC to monitor voltage, multiple voltages as well as temperature. This is an example of a real design we did in 28 nanometer it's portable all the way up to 0.18. It's a 14-bit fully digital output with an ADC, plus minus one degree C temperature accuracy, 0.05 C resolution. And you have some modes where you can put it in a particular mode where the power consumption is less than one microampere. Because temperature doesn't change that fast. So you don't need to look at it all the time. Next is a oscillator and real-time clock. Now, every chip, it needs that oscillator and real-time clock because when all your digital is going to sleep, somebody has to keep time. Somebody has to decide when things are happening and wake things back up. Now, most of these, a lot of these variables and uh, implantables because of form factor issues. I mean, think of a uh, armband. It's, it's round. So you're not going to be able to put a crystal in there. Crystal is not going to like it to have a substrate which is flexing. In that case, we provide a solution, which is like a plus minus 2% frequency stability RC oscillator, doesn't need a crystal, and power consumption is 200 nanoamperes at 32 kilohertz. Again, you can scale it up. If you need to go to higher frequencies, you can go up to 32 megahertz. We have our optional RTC logic, which can give you real time and uh, time of day, calendar functions, etc. event detection, which you can use to implement your system. Now for those uh, situations where you absolutely need a crystal oscillator, we also provide a uh, low current option, 100 nanoampere at 32 kilohertz. Uh, this is an example of a sensor interface 
most of the sensors, they need a A to D converter to take all that signal and process it. And typically in an IoT device, you don't have a single sensor. You have multiple such sensors. Our SAR uh, ADCs, they don't take any power when they're on. And then we build in a MUX in there so that you can monitor up to 16 single-ended signals or eight differential signals using the same piece of IP. Again, the goal here is to reduce the footprint and give you maximum flexibility. Last but not least, the LDO. It's a humble LDO. Most many designs have it. Uh, a key requirement for IoT applications, low power applications, is the low quiescent current. So we have some LDOs which consume less than one microampere quiescent current, but they can supply up to 100 milliampere in peaks, in burst mode, uh, and very good uh, response time to low transients. At the same time, you don't compromise on performance, so you get the same features you expect from a much higher current LDO, like soft start, overcurrent protection, and programmable output voltage, et cetera. Uh, last, lastly, we have some uh, series of linear amplifiers, comparators, et cetera. Again, ultra low current, sub few hundred nano amperes. And these are the circuits which interface to the outside world and wake up your digital when some event happens. So instead of, let's say you have a glass break detector, there's a vibration. Now, if your uh, digital has to wake up every time and process that signature and then go to sleep, you're wasting power. Because nine times out of 10, that's because the neighbor's cat jumped across the roof somewhere. So what we want to do is, instead of doing all that processing in digital, move some of them, that processing into very low current analog, which you can do because these things do not need very high frequency. And you can look at the signature of the signal and only wake up your digital when absolutely needed. Same thing with uh, uh, DC-DC converters. Very low quiescent current, again, has to respond very fast. Digital to analog converters, etc. So one theme which you see in IoT systems, if you want to have a differentiated product, you need to have differentiation at many levels. You need to have differentiation at the architecture level, at the circuit level, at the system level, software level. But ultimately, at the end, if your electronics at the bottom doesn't have the right hooks, then all this is useless. You need to have that. So at Omni, we are making sure that you forget about the electronics and you focus on what you do well. And we will make sure that the electronics that is needed is all there, doing what you need, giving you a differentiated solution. And most importantly, they are plug and play. So you don't have to worry about how this piece of, I mean, you don't have to spend months trying to figure out how this piece of analog IP is going to work. You put them together and they work as expected. That concludes my talk.